Uh, I would like actually to use this opportunity to thank our partners, JIZ, uh, BMZ, UNESCO IQ Institute for Water Education, and the Space Irrigation Network for giving us, the Mahala University, the opportunity to present this important initiative that aims at building the capacity of professionals in designing, constructing, and managing successful flood-based farming systems in the arid and semi-arid lowlands of Eastern Africa or the Horn of Africa. Uh, this partnership actually aims to be able to contribute uh, through this capacity building towards improving the food security and drought resilience of the very vulnerable uh, segments of the society uh, in Africa. So the title is already there. Um, the arid and semi-arid lowlands of uh, uh, Africa in general or sub-Saharan Africa are characterized by food insecurity, uh, drought, uh, resilience problems, and sustainable land natural resource management uh, problems. Uh, most of the arid and semi-arid, in most of these arid and semi-arid lowlands, the uh, livelihood means is obviously either pastoralism or to some extent agro-pastoralism. And the water for these agro-pastoralists and pastoralists uh, uh, is obviously flood that comes from the uh, highlands or from the uh, uh, mountainous uh, catchments. This flood, if we use it properly, it could be a source of livelihood. But at the same time, if it is poorly managed, then it could be a source of disaster too. Uh, let me briefly talk about uh, some characteristics of this arid and semi-arid lowlands of the Horn of Africa. To start with, the Horn of Africa, most of the countries of the Horn of Africa are characterized by huge landmass of arid and semi-arid areas. As you can see, it starts from like 42% in Uganda, and of course goes up to 80% when, uh, in Kenya. And of course, in these uh, areas, or in the Horn of Africa, about 30 million pastoralists and agro-pastoralists uh, are living. Uh, and Imagine how or see how this area is obviously very, very terrible to live. Because you can see there, that there is a very low and erratic rainfall that doesn't, in most cases, exist, uh, exceed 350 millimeters. There is no as such reliable uh, uh, perennial water source. And there is a very high temperature which reaches up to 50 uh, de degrees centigrade. Then you can imagine how uh, uh, agriculture or uh, pastoralism will be difficult, practically difficult uh, to, to be engaged in this area. Add to that the impact of climate change. Climate change is playing its role also in obviously making the life of these pastoralists and agro-pastoralists agro terrible. Uh, through what? Through obviously recurrent droughts, floods, and of course, as a result, degradation of natural resources. Then as a result of these combined uh, 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 problems, we can say that this region, the arid and semi-arid lowland of the Horn of Africa is probably the most vulnerable region for food security. For example, if we take the 2011-2010-11 the drought, nearly half out of the 30 million, 13 million of pastoralists and agro-pastoralists were affected and were looking actually for, for aid. And there were actually huge loss of livestock as well as crops. On the other hand, these areas are also endowed with numerous rivers that bring huge seasonal short and heavy flood from the uplands or from the highland catchments. But this floods are often unpredictable and they can be destructive if they cannot be uh, managed properly. So if they are not managed properly, then they can be source of erosion, they can be source of loss of arable land, they can be source of loss of pasture land even and uh, depletion of our soil resources. This pictures, for example, clearly, clearly indicate how uh, this uh, poor management of flood based farming could have a negative impact on our nature and, of course, livelihood. Then if, for example, the first one, if the catchment is not protected and if we don't have actually good soil and water conservation or watershed management in our catchments, then the huge floods that are coming from this steep highlands could be source of erosion and, of course, sedimentation of our water reservoirs and other water workers. On the other hand, if the lowland is devoid of its soil through this huge flood eroding it, then infiltration could be minimum and, of course, groundwater recharge. And at the end of the day, uh, uh, water for drinking could also be, could also be a trouble. Uh, then what are the options? 
I think fluid-based farming system, of course, uh, could be a very significant and sustainable approach uh, that could work in this environment. Uh, why are we saying that this is the only option or the most important option in order to convert the destructive nature of flood to productive nature or as a source of livelihood to the communities of the arid and semi-arid lowlands of the sub-Saharan sub Africa in general and of course the East African countries in, par in particular is that this flood-based farming system is a system that uses often unpredictable and occasionally destructive flood from mountain catchments for multiple use for crop production, for rangeland and for even water supply as well as groundwater recharge. Through how, or, or sorry, through what means is through different actually techniques. We can implement spate irrigation, we can implement flood recession and inundation, and of course we can also implement flood spreading weirs to make use of this water. And it is also very significant uh, in terms of aerial coverage and of course population uh, uh, coverage as well because it accounts around 30 million hectares across the world. And when we come to the Sub-Saharan Africa, it covers 15 million hectares. And if we multiply it by five, then it supports 75 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa. And in, top, in Ethiopia alone, about, about 12 million people uh, uh, actually uh, uh, depend on it. So we can imagine actually how significant it is from livelihood point of view. But it is also a very ideal, a very ideal or I would say climate smart technology that can adapt to the climate. Imagine, if we are converting a destructive flood and predictable flood into productive uh, uh, way, then I don't think there is another term actually to uh, uh, express flood-based farming. These are some of the technologies that can be used in flood-based farming uh, uh, harvesting. Uh, you can see the flood uh, spreading wheel, and then you have actually modern intake uh, 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 and canal head of spate irrigation. This one, the third one, is obviously the traditional one. So uh, uh, if we combine, combine the traditional and the modern, I think we get uh, uh, to what we need to uh, 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 get. Uh, OK. Now, the question is, how are we developing flood bad flood-based farming systems. I think the most important missing link or element in flood-based farming development in East Africa is the lack of integrated appro watershed approach. We don't as such see flood-based farming system as part and parcel of the whole river basin. So we only think of building a structure somewhere in the river without obviously considering what is going on in the upper catchment and so on and so forth. So technology alone doesn't actually guarantee success. What do we need to do? We need to consider, we need to consider the ecological, economical, social, and institutional aspects, taking the whole river basin as one integral entity. And in this, we have to be able to guarantee participation, including the local knowledge of obviously uh, uh, the communities. And obviously, if we have to use flood that is coming from highlands, then you can imagine the source of water is the highland, and the users are the lowland. So there needs to be some sort of negotiation uh, between the highlanders and the lowlanders in order to be able to resolve conflicts that comes actually out of uh, 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 sharing water. So in general, if we pr properly plan, design, construct, and implement flood-based farming systems, they can have far-reaching, far-reaching, uh, 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 let's say, advantage beyond supplying water for agriculture. They can preserve the biodiversity, they can mitigate flood peaks, they can stabilize river systems, and of course, they can recharge the groundwater. There are here some pictures that indicate, obviously, the importance of uh, this flood-based farming. In the first one, I took the picture myself, is you can imagine that flood, which is coming with huge uh, amount and energy, is simply uh, diverted and used for productive purpose in one of the lowlands of Ethiopia in the north. And then, of course, it can also, this flood-based farming system can also be a source of water for, uh, uh, for example, lakes that uh, uh, are habitats to some uh, 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 animals, birds, whatever. But, we have challenges, challenges in capacity to be able to sustainably promote and implement uh, 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 flood-based farming systems developed uh, in organizing flood-based farming systems over centuries in Ethiopia and in other countries in the sub-Saharan Africa and in the Horn of Africa. However, there still remains to be capacity gap. 
gap in knowledge, gap in experience, and gap in skill in, the, in, in, in promoting actually successful flood-based farming systems. And of course, uh, 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 help the poor farmers or the vulnerable uh, sectors of the, the uh, society. Why? The first thing is the conventional nature of, sorry, the conventional nature of the education system. The education system that obviously uh, uh, trains engineers normally trains them for the mainstream agriculture, for the mainstream irrigation, for the perennial rivers that have actually base flows and that are not as such uh, 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 well twinned with the flood base or f with, with flood nature that comes with huge energy, that comes with boulders, with huge sediment, and so on and so forth. So this nature of training in general have limited the number of engineers that could successfully design and implement flood bed farming systems. And the other aspect which I have mentioned at earlier is the lack of looking or taking this flood based farming as one in as one part of the whole river basin system. So uh, lack of capacity in integrated watershed wide approach is another problem. And of course, the other is participatory planning. There are so many cases uh, of failure because of actually, uh, 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 because of lack of participating the farmers who have huge knowledge in, li in living with the flood, in managing flood over the centuries. Uh, then engineers, in most cases, actually, uh, 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 let's say, uh, uh, go on their own and doesn't obviously take the advice of the farmers. And finally, there are many uh, structures that have failed. So what do we need to do? We need to develop capacity in flood-based farming in Asali areas uh, uh, because it is insufficient to successfully disseminate technology locally and, of course, regionally. And human capital is obviously the first one that comes here. You can see the impact of insufficient capacity. The first one is a case from the northern part of Ethiopia. This huge structure was constructed at 90 degree uh, uh, across, across actually a riverbed. And, and of course, you can imagine an intake uh, uh, was uh, prepared, but that doesn't take into account the flood characteristics. This design was made based on the conventional irrigation uh, uh, designs for perennial rivers. So you can see, at first you see the in, uh, intake, the intake open, but immediately after two seasons, it was totally filled. This is a gash case in Sudan. As you can see, this uh, 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 where the intake was blocked with sediment that actually caused uh, a decrease in the amount of discharge by 70 percent, and hence the irrigated area from this from this gash scheme uh, has also reduced to. Uh, 50 percent. All this due to poor design, and this is obviously due to poor capacity. But recently, there is a very good response to all this, this uh, to all this meeting this capacity challenge, and that was actually through the initiative by GIZ, Magala University, uh, UNESCO IT Institute for Water Education, and and the Space Irrigation Network and other partners. Since 2012, this German government, uh, uh, BMZ, through GIZ, of course, has been supporting capacity development initiative uh, for fresh farming system in the Horn of Africa, as I have said, in collaboration with these institutes. And following a very extensive research in the arid and semi-arid lowlands of Ethiopia in 2012, we came to develop a regular short course uh, on integrated watershed management and flood-based farming. The course was designed to be able to fill the most important and critical uh, knowledge gaps of actually flood-based farming development and management. Okay, uh, and it is demand-driven. So the short course normally uh, 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 brings this flood-based farming system as one part of the integral river basin. And as you can see, there are watershed management courses, participatory planning, and water and land management, as well as participatory design uh, of flood-based farming systems. Uh, the short course was pilot run in 2013 at Magala University, and it was conducted by local and international experts, assuring obviously high quality of content, delivery, and organization. It also supports regional experience and knowledge technology sharing because we have experts coming from different parts of uh, uh, arid and semi-arid lowland areas in Middle East and West Africa as well. And all modules were actually interactive in nature. Modern training methods were used, including all this lecturing, video uh, group exercise, and practical field work. Participants were across the uh, most important stakeholders, from public sectors to uh, researchers and academia. 
Uh, these are actually some of the pictures, as you can see, field work, uh, and of course exercises of uh, participants, and, and of course group discussion. Uh, what are the results we achieved so far? Curriculum has already been established, and we are continuously amending it or improving it. And the first pilot uh, uh, program was successful with 45 trainees uh, from two countries, especially Ethiopia and Mali. And knowledge and technology, as I have mentioned, it was shared from different countries. And second course is now online for application. And we now wanted to take it one level higher towards regional uh, short course. Uh, then there is an outcome out of this partnership and out of this uh, course, uh, flood-based farming course. Uh, uh, that is obviously, we have come up with two important, uh, let's say, interventions uh, uh, out of this uh, partnership. The first is improved hybrid spate irrigation system was designed and implemented uh, in Raya Valley in Ethiopia. And the first flood spreading weir also was implemented in Afar region. As you can see, flood spreading weir was introduced by GIZ and its partners in Niger first, but now the first implementation in Ethiopia has been seen in Afar. And of course, in Tigray, we have as a result of this partnership, the researches and the capacity building process, we have come now with a new design, which is known as hybrid design of spate irrigation systems, which takes into account the good aspects of traditional system and modern uh, nature. Finally, uh, you see this charming agro-pastoralist from the Afar region of Ethiopia. Imagine how satisfying it would be to invest on these most vulnerable people and, of course, to be able to contribute to improve their livelihood and, of course, to improve their strengths to uh, uh, award this drought resilience. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>